Hello, my name is Anastasia Makariva, and you are watching the first uh, biotic regulation video. Um, today we consider the difference between temperature driven and condensation driven air circulation. We will try to consider it uh, in simple terms, on a qualitative level, without numbers. So, what's the difference? Let's imagine we have two air columns. See, column A and column B. And they are filled with gas, with air. Right. These are air molecules, and they are in the gravitational field of the Earth. What happens to air pressure in these columns? How does it depend on altitude? So this is altitude, h height, and this is logarithm of pressure. So what we know that pressure, air pressure, declines with altitude, right? Why does it decline? That's important. To understand why it declines, uh, it is useful to remember that the gravitational potential energy increases with height. And so there is um, <clears throat> the energy conservation law. So if there are molecules somewhere at the surface and they decide to go high in the atmosphere, they must possess sufficient energy. And there are very few molecules with energy sufficient to overcome gravity and rise high to the atmosphere. This proportion is governed by Boltzmann exponent, and so it declines exponentially um, with uh, growing energy required to go upwards. And so, because of the fact that the number of molecules uh, which can reach high to the atmosphere declines, so does the air pressure. Because, as we all know from the ideal gas law, air pressure at a given temperature is simply proportional to the number of molecules per unit volume. So, now uh, let us consider what happens if we warm one of the columns, right? Let's say warm column A, warm, right? Now, as we have warmed the air, the molecular energy has increased. And so the proportion of molecules which can reach higher to the atmosphere has increased as well. And so while the air pressure still declines with height, it does so more slowly now in column A than it does in column B, which hasn't been warmed. And at the surface, the pressure differ the pressure in both columns remained the same, because this pressure is equal to the weight of all molecules above a unit surface area, and we haven't changed that number. So we haven't changed the amount of molecules in the column. We just changed their distribution over altitude. And so we notice that 
there is this pressure difference and so we and uh, there is a surplus of pressure in column A and so we can expect that at a certain altitude there will be an air motion generated by this pressure surplus and the air will flow from A to B and by continuity if there is a circulation there will be a reverse air flow somewhere at the surface where the pressure difference is minimal from B to A. And this is the temperature driven circulation. Here the cause of the air motion is the pressure surplus in the warmer column. Right? And it occurs somewhere in the upper atmosphere. So, despite air pressure in column A is everywhere higher initially, except at the surface, we will see air motion from A to B in the upper atmosphere and from B to A, which implies a reversal of the temperature of the pressure difference in the lower atmosphere. Now let us look at the condensation picture. Condensation. Condensation. Right? Again, we have two columns. Right? A and B. And there is some air. And there is also some condensable gas like water vapor, but the total number of molecules is the same in both columns. And now what we do, we remove uh, some molecules by condensation from column A. For example, we initiate a small-scale convection event here, so the moist air rises, there is condensation, precipitation, and some water will be here, right? So what happens to air pressure? So logarithm pressure and altitude, and this is this is B, which is stable as here, but now we will see that air pressure in column A is everywhere lower than it is in column B. Why? Because there is there are fewer molecules. We have removed some molecules from column A, and so everywhere the number has uh, decreased and so air pressure is everywhere lower in column B than it is in column in column A sorry than it is in column B and in this case the maximum pressure difference is at the surface right you can see the difference here we have maximum somewhere in the upper atmosphere here and here we have the maximum pressure difference at the surface because it is above the surface that the total number of removed molecules is maximum. And uh, so we can expect that there will be no air flow from B to A in the lower atmosphere right driven by this maximum pressure gradient and by continuity it will be associated with some reverse airflow in the upper atmosphere so if we consider compare the two pictures we will see that the difference is that here we have the cause of the circulation is this pressure difference at the surface. 
while here it is the precious surplus in the upper atmosphere. And uh, so uh, that's the difference. But um, the uh, serious questions they arise. Uh, um, they are unfortunately cannot be considered at this simple level, and the questions are whether this pressure gradient, pressure surplus in the temperature paradigm, sufficient to dry appreciable air motion at the surface, and likewise in the condensation paradigm, whether this pressure gradient at the surface can be coupled with the necessary pressure gradient in the upper atmosphere such that the circulation is energetically sustainable. These are more complex questions and uh, perhaps we will um, consider them later. But as a simple picture perhaps some of you will find it useful. And um, <clears throat> in somewhat greater details we have already considered this um, in one of our ACPD discussions and you will find the address of our comment in the description to this video and I also write it down here. This is a shortened link and you should be interested in figure 2. This is the link to one of our comments in ACPD discussions. So, thank you for watching. I hope it was useful and bye-bye.